Hi there, Marilyn here. I'm back uh, with Cotton and Chocolate for Halloween Figs with a Twist, month six. So now we're doing on page 16, block 13, and this is the Autumn Lily block. So this is our first applique block in the quilt. I know, exciting. So some of you are, you are like, I got this, I know how to applique, and others of you are like, uh-oh. But I will walk you through how I did the applique. Now I do um, regular turned applique, but in this quilt, I did raw edge applique. And it's a lot easier and quicker. And if you aren't familiar with it, I'll just do a run through of how you do it. And if you are doing turned applique, then you can just look at the colors and then go from there and do, you're on your own. You're on your own. Okay, but you don't, you don't need help. Okay, so these are the two colorways. We have the exact same block, but the colors change. So this is block one, and you can look at the colors in here. All the colors are taken from the previous fabrics given to you. And block two is where? It's down here. And this is the second colorway. Now, if you don't like those, you can reach back into the fabrics given to you previously and mix it up. It's your quilt. You can do whatever you want, but you should have plenty of fabric to mix it up. So this is the pattern. Now, if you're using fusible web, I you can use like um, heat and bond. You can use steam and seam. I use soft use. I like. I love soft use. We have it at the store in sheets or on rolls. But in any case, you can go ahead. One side is smooth, and that's the side you trace on. One side is pebbly, and that's the fusible. You don't want to trace on that side, and you don't want to put your iron on that side because guess what? It's going to stick very nicely to your iron. Mm, you don't want that. And that's when our iron clean product comes in very handy. We all do it once or twice or a few times. Okay, it's easy to make the mistake. Now you can go right ahead and trace from underneath, okay? But when I'm doing a lot of pieces over and over, what I do is trace it once onto some plastic template because it makes it a lot easier and not that I'm not perfect, but it is more consistent. So I just traced it and cut it out wrote a note for myself of what this is, and then I can put it right on top and trace a lot of them. And then what I do is I like cutting out the middle of the fusible because then it gives my pieces a softer hand. I don't have this full fusible piece on the top of my quilt and it's not as stiff. So I find it easier I've traced just a few here, but you know, on your leaves, you need two, four, six, eight times two, because you need two of these, but you need 16 leaves, you need a lot. So I would trace all 16, and then it's easier to cut out the center. So when I'm tracing it on here, and I just take my pencil and trace it, so it's a lot easier, but it's easier to cut out the center if I have them all in one big block rather than trying to cut it out. And then I just take a little knife and then keep it on my mat and then just cut out the middle. How much do you leave? Oh, you know, more, a little more than a quarter inch. That way I have enough to still fuse on. Where do you get these knives? Well, of course we sell them at the shop. And then we have extra blades too, okay? The same for the center of the, the um, lily that's in the middle. I cut those out too, okay? The only thing I don't cut out is a stem because it's already pretty skinny. So I cut them all out before you fuse it to the wrong side of the fabric because then it's too late, all right? So I cut those out and then you're going to rough cut the shape. Don't cut it to the exact size because then you're gonna have to try to cut it exact again. So you can see my leaf, I've rough cut it. I've done a couple. So this is the rough cut from here. And since I know I need eight, I can do eight on this strip of fabric. I can do eight. So I did a couple rough cut, and then I'll take my scissors and cut it exactly down to shape, okay? But before I do all that, I forgot to mention, you need to cut down your background. And this is taken from that big piece you got in this kit. And they talk to you about cutting down your fabric. So pay attention to your cuts. 
follow that and then out of one of these cuts you need two eight and a half by eight and a half inch squares and then if you can see this you may not be able to see this but what i did is i folded them in quarter and then in quarter and just pressed it so that i have a pressed diagonal line down here with the center marking so i know where to place my block because otherwise there's no other guide okay so I get all of my flowers drawn and cut out, and then I get them pressed to the proper colors or whatever I want. So this one is in particular um, the one that you see here, which is this color and then the leaves all the way around. And then I also need a stem. So I still, I'm not doing a bias bar with this. I'm just doing it raw edge applique. So these stems are a quarter inch. So I just take a big piece of fusible and I just take one of these and I just made it large and I put it down on my fabric and then I cut a quarter inch strip out of it. And these are about, they finish at three inches. So I'll cut about three and a half inches. So I have a little bit to go under my flower. So once you're ready to go, you get these cut off you're going to peel off the paper on the back and stick it down. But before I press it, I'm gonna put everything kind of in shape, you know, in place. Because once you press this to the fabric, that's it. It's not moving. So you're done. So make sure it's where you want it to be. But I will peel this off. Make sure my fusible is stuck on there. The paper peels off. Okay, and then I would get my little flowers in place and then I would stick my leaves on them. I might, I might do one at a time and make sure that they're placed evenly and I kind of look where my lines are, make sure my stems are in line. This one's too long, I haven't cut it down yet. And then the other ones and then I get my little leaf here and then put my other leaf out. So I might do one flower at a time and make sure you have it on your pressing table and they get the other side and then your two sides down. And then I kind of look where I'm setting there. So I might put my ruler out and say, how far do I want it off the edge? So, you know, I'll take one of my rulers and say, well, maybe I want it about an inch off. Does that look good? And see even, and then put the other one here. So I do that all the way around and make sure that it looks nice and even where I want it to sit, okay? And then when I'm satisfied, then I'll take and carefully set my iron and set it down and press it. And press it and then press the other flowers. Now when I have it nicely pressed, what I also do is pick it up and press it from the back side because what it does is it draws that fusible up through the back of the fabric to make sure it's nice and fused. Now, are we done yet? No, this is a temporary fusible. This isn't for, to last forever, it will, will eventually pull up. You need to stitch this down. And you can do it with a little straight stitch on the edge. You can do it with decorative stitching. You can do it with contrasting thread. You can do it with matching thread, however confident you are. I usually do a little blanket stitch because I like how well it holds. So if I'm washing the quilt, it won't fray. If you do a little straight stitch inside, it might fray a little bit when you wash it. So it just depends upon what you want. A little tiny blanket stitch, real little, will hold all those edges in. And of course you can do a really cute little decorative stitch if you have those on your machine. So you can be creative and inventive or whatever you wanna do. So that's how you do these, these with a raw edge applique. It is pretty easy, so don't be afraid to do it. And then the other colorway you saw, so you can just change up your colors and do another darker stem. You can see on here, I did do a blanket stitch with a yellow through the whole thing because I wanted it to show up and I wanted it to show up on the stem. And then I did the same yellow, actually I did the same yellow thread on all of my applique. So I did it on everything all the way through the quilt. It kind of um, was a little bit darker gold than the background. And I just liked it and that's what I decided to do. I didn't change it up. So that's my quick and dirty lesson on raw edge applique. If you have any more questions, of course you can always reach out to me. 
But that's it for now. We'll see you soon. Thank you.